what's up? So what we have here in front of us today is an Atari Tetris uh, game board. It's a uh, JAMA PCB, uh, JAMA standard. Um, got this in the last week and uh, tried to fire it up in one of my cabinets and the game worked okay but the volume was not very loud. Um, basically went we tracked down the volume pot and cranked that as loud as we could and we did get some more volume out of it but it's still very faint. Uh, a little bit of crackling too, a little bit of buzzing. Uh, basically just because it's maxed out. So you know, I did a little research and found a thread on Clav that sort of talks about the capacitors and the audio section of this uh, PCB that uh, should be replaced in order to repair that sound. Um, so basically there are about 12 uh, capacitors on this board. Um, there's a group of 10 here uh, in this little cluster and then there's actually one here uh, and I think there was another one back here. Um, so the group of 12, uh, only these 10 are responsible for the audio section. Um, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to order these capacitors as well. We'll probably replace those. Um, so yeah, basically, you know, there's no, you know, Bob Roberts, Atari, Tetris, uh, you know, cap kit. Uh, I, I didn't see one there. Uh, you know, I checked around on some different websites. Nobody sells a specific cap kit for this board. So essentially what we were looking at was ordering a custom cap kit. And, you know, the first person that comes to mind for me to be able to order this from would be Ian Kellogg, mainly because I talk to him on a regular basis, and uh, he, he seems pretty happy to, to try to go off and put these kits together for people. So uh, I did actually already get him a list of these caps, um, the, the uh, farad value and the voltage, and sent that off to him. But I mentioned, you know, try to get as small as possible, uh, because they are quite small. They, they're they very sort of crammed in there. Um, if you can see, they're, they're very close together here. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not working with much space there. So it's very important that we get the, uh, the smallest size possible. Uh, for these capacitor values. Now, uh, what he told me to do, he said to actually measure these, uh, measure the diameter of the different capacitors here so that when he checks his inventory he can see uh, if he has caps that are going to fit in that place. Um, so basically uh, what I've got here today is a set of calipers, um, measures in millimeters, so we're basically just going to measure a few of these uh, capacitors with the uh, the calipers, and uh, then we'll send that order off to uh, Ian Kellogg. So one thing I wanted to show you guys really quick before we get too far into sort of measuring this and then documenting everything is one of the big reasons why we want to measure these capacitors for this custom cap kit, um, mainly because it was uh, you know they are crammed all in here quite tight together. Um, you might know that often you can replace uh, certain capacitors with higher voltage ratings and they will work just fine on your board. Uh, you always want to have the proper microfarad reading. Uh, that needs to match exactly with the original part. Um, but with your voltage you can be the same number or higher but you don't want to be lower than that voltage. So for example we have this one capacitor at C60 and on our documentation, it reads us that it is 1,000 microfarads at 25 volts. Now, I have this capacitor from another cap kit that I got from, from Ian a while back. And this one is 1,000 microfarads at 50 volts. So technically, this capacitor would work fine in place of this one. But it's a little bit wider. Um, so that's where we kind of wanted to, to measure everything properly. We'll get the calipers in there and we'll measure that. So, you know, for the original capacitor, we see that it comes in at about uh, 13 and a half millimeters. And then this one that we could potentially use as a replacement uh, is coming in at like 16 and a half. So it's just a, it's just a touch bigger. Uh, you know, we might be able to cram it in there, but I think it's really going to kind of limit how much space we have left for everything else. And of course, when you see how tight everything else is on here, um, you, you're going to want to really make sure you get the proper size 
before you order them because if you get one that's just a millimeter or two too big that could be enough to crowd everything else out and you're going to get 90 percent through this this cap kit and realize oh shit i've ran out of space i have to undo all the work i've done you know i've lost track of my polarity uh, you know what caps I put in whatever I mean it's just uh, you know it's gonna be bad news so really 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 can't reiterate enough measure those caps and and document that so when you make your order you're getting exactly what you need so for the most part you can see that uh, the caps are labeled I can see pretty much all of them uh, the labels on them there's a few that are kind of crammed in the middle. I can't see which cap they are, uh, what the cap number is on it. Uh, but essentially, this this section of the uh, audio um, covers capacitors C58, C60, C61, uh, C62, C63, 64, 65, 66, 67, and 68. Um, so that is 10 different capacitors. And again, you know, you're just going to grab your, your calipers and we're going to measure each of these. So we have our, uh, our largest cap. And, and actually, this one is the one that I think is suspect on this board. Uh, this is likely the one that's going to be causing us the, the problems. Uh, some of the smaller ones, I can't tell. There's not, like, not really any bulging and they seem to be okay. They seem to be solid on the top. But this one here, um, this, this C60, is definitely got a little bulge on the top. Uh, it's it's kind of looking corroded a bit, um, so I'm you know suspecting that that thing is is probably definitely shot. Um, so we're just gonna measure that one real quick with our calipers, and uh, this usually is a, a digital caliper uh, with a little screen here that reads. Unfortunately, tonight my batteries died, but we still have the little ruler section here where we can read off the millimeters. So we're just gonna do that real quick. And we will measure, and we are getting about 13 and a half, uh, 13 and a half millimeters on that. So I actually have um, this sheet where I'm going to be tracking all this information. So I suggest you do the same if you're going to be getting into this, and, and really keep track of those numbers so that uh, you have the proper information to send off to Bob Roberts or Ian Kellogg or or do an order yourself on uh, on Mouser or DigiKey. So we do have a number of these capacitors that you know I'm looking at them and I can see visually that they are all the same diameter. Um, we'll double check them really quick. Uh, there's one here that seems like it might be a little wider so we'll measure that one for sure. And these ones I'm pretty confident that they are all within the same size uh, within half a millimeter or so but we'll get uh, the obviously the biggest one first and we see that that one is uh, number C62 and C62 is a 220 microfarad uh, 10 volt and uh, I'm just looking at the cap on that and I see that that is the proper value so we know we've got the right cap um, so we're just gonna get in here with our our calipers real quick and I basically got about uh, seven millimeters on that one. So that was seven millimeters. And then basically everything else looks like it's pretty close in size. Um, so you basically got C61, 63, 64, 65, all the way through to C68. Um, look to be all the same diameter. So we're just going to double check a few of them first. Um, this first one is C68. So we are going to get our caliper on that. And it is measuring in at about five and a quarter millimeters. So 5.25 millimeters. And then we're just going to see uh, with some of the other ones here, if that's the same case. And it looks like that one is the same. And we've got like 5.25, 5.25, um, yeah, 
5.25 okay so I'm pretty comfortable that all of these uh, are, are 5.25s and uh, we're just gonna check the ones that are not in the audio section 5.25 there as well and 5.25 or five and a half it's it's somewhere there <clears throat> so basically the only uh, two caps that are sort of a different size than everything else were the C60 and the C62. So we've got C60 and C62. Everything else seems to be five, uh, five and a quarter or five and a half millimeters. Um, so I think we're pretty safe if we uh, look for something that's like five or 5.25. That should fit in there okay. Um, so yeah. Um, one thing you'll notice, I did actually take the heat sink off of this um, this transistor uh, before we got started, just to kind of speed things up. But we'll put that back on in the next video uh, when we recap everything. And, and I'm going to say that this cap job is actually going to be uh, fairly challenging because the um, pins are very close together. Because these capacitors are so small, of course, they're their legs are very close together so we're really gonna have to take our time when we we take these ones out uh, we're really gonna have to have a very fine tip uh, soldering uh, tip and uh, take our time with that take them all out and uh, and make sure we're not bridging any connections or anything uh, and also while paying attention to the polarity and uh, it seems that we're uh, polarity is all going in one direction uh, one direction on this board so everything is coming off on this side. The stripe is uh, is on this side, um, except for this cap, and and uh, that one's not part of the audio section. So anyway, we're gonna go and we're gonna take a look at uh, ordering uh, through the the Mouser or DigiKey websites real quick, just to kind of show you where do you start. Uh, you know, where do you drill into that that menu system that they have. Um, you know what products are you looking at, and, and how are you narrowing it down? I know those website websites can be very uh, intimidating if you you know you haven't ordered from them before, or you don't have a, a very strong background in electronics. You might not know where to look or, or where to start. So we're going to try to take you through some of the screens there. Hey there. So we're going to do uh, just a quick little demonstration of how you might purchase uh, some capacitors from. Uh, electronics website. In this example will do it with the Mouser Electronics website. This is the Canadian site. Uh, everything is in Canadian dollars. Uh, so basically we're going to go to their homepage. It's just ca.mouser.com. Uh, you'll land here on the homepage and basically you'll see the product finder on the left. We are wanting to go down to passive components and then to capacitors and the type of capacitor that uh, most of these kits use are the aluminum electrolytic capacitors so we're going to drill into that category and then basically we are giving sort of a filter here that we have to choose a manufacturer and a, and a bunch of uh, different ratings uh, so we're just going to pick uh, one of these manufacturers here and the type of termination style on these capacitors that we use are radial uh, and then we're just going to pick one of the capacitors that were uh, sort of on our cap list for this Tetris Atari Tetris board, and we are going to pick a uh, 2.2 microfarad at 50 volts, and we are going to say that it has a maximum operating temperature of 105 degrees, and it needs to be about five millimeters. If you remember, we we measured those. Uh, with the caliper a little earlier and we found that they were like around five millimeters and uh, the length in that uh, I mean you know we, we've got 17 uh, potential matches so what we could do is pick a tolerance level of uh, say 20 percent and uh, or 10 percent let's see what that rounds everything down to so we get one remaining and we will see if we can apply that filter and then it should take us right to that particular capacitor with those ratings 
since it was the only option left. Uh, so we just want to double check the specifications. Um, it is the proper termination style, proper capacitance, the proper uh, DC voltage rating, and the tolerance that you selected along with the 105 degrees Celsius. Uh, the diameter was very important, so we do see that that's okay. Uh, 11 millimeters, uh, low leakage, basically sounds like it's going to be okay for what we need it to do. And we see the life is 2,000 hours. Um, so the idea is that at 105 degrees Celsius, uh, for capacitor, it would last up to 2,000 hours, or you know, hopefully you get some more life than that out of it. Uh, my understanding is basically if you're running the capacitors at a lower temperature, so for every 10 degrees less, uh, I believe it doubles the life of the capacitor, or maybe it adds a thousand hours. That's generally, uh, you know, if you find you're in a situation where you're not going to get above, you know, 65 degrees Celsius or something. Uh, you may get 10,000 hours or, or, or you know more out of that capacitor. You may get a lot of life out of it. So that's sort of the minimum rating, I think. But basically, yeah, that's that's sort of how you would order from from Mouser. Uh, we'll see here the pricing uh, in Canadian dollars listed here, and we see that that particular capacitor, if we wanted to buy just one of them, uh, it's 55.1 cents. Um, obviously, you know some of these guys like Ian or Bob Roberts or whoever. Uh, they stock hundreds or even thousands of these particular components, individual components. So when they're putting an order in, you know, Ian might put in an order, he needs 200 of these, so he's going to get them for 18 cents each. Uh, you know, and that's going to make up his kit. Um, you know, obviously when he prices it out, he's going to have a little bit of overhead and his time and effort to put that together. But, uh, you know, if you need to buy a lot yourself, uh, you know, this would be the the way to do it. Um, you know, if you just need a one-off, it's probably better for you to order from someone like Ian or Bob Roberts if they happen to have these uh, p particular sets of, of capacitors that you need for your project. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's it. That's uh, the Mouser Electronics website. Uh, this is the one I, I like to use. Um, so, I mean, if you have any questions about this video, uh, go ahead and ask us down below in the comments. We'll we'll try to answer everything if we can. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends. And, uh, yeah, we just want to thank you for uh, spending the time with us. And uh, thanks for watching.